So uh, first of all, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, very happy to be here. And uh, I also want to take this opportunity to thank Intel for a lot of great contributions to the community, as well as hosting this great meetup uh, to gather us together. So I'm talking about the uh, give an update on the community uh, since our last meetup. And Aluxio previously worked called Tachyon, and uh, it's the open source memory speed virtual distributed storage. And, uh, and the first thing I want to talk about, uh, the, the updates from the last meetup, is actually that we changed the name, rebranded from, uh, from Tachyon to, uh, to Aluxio. This is, uh, and along with the name change, we, we posted a blog and released our 1.0 release to update the vision of the project to become the de facto standard for the storage unification layer for big data and other scale out applications. And you, uh, we welcome you to check out the, uh, the blog and to, uh, to read about us. So uh, just one page about the company behind this, uh, behind this uh, project, Aluxio Company. So we are funded by the Aluxio creators as well as the uh, top developers in the, uh, in the community. And uh, it's PhDs from Berkeley, Stanford, CMU, and uh, from various companies and funded by Andreessen. Okay. So people may ask why we are doing this project called Aluxio. Uh, there, are, there, are several, there are several reasons. The one important reason is about hardware trend. So for the hardware trend, on one side, we want to talk about the performance. For performance, DRAM throughput increased exponentially every year, as you can see. On the other side, disk throughput, throughput increased slowly. Then you will see memory locality is a key to achieve respon uh, interactive response time. That's about the performance of the DRAM. And then let's look at the price. So if you look at the DRAM price, it decreased uh, by half every 18 months. And as a result, you will see at the early 2000 uh, firms from Wall Street, they start to leverage DRAM technology aggressively. And then around 2010, the company like Google, Baidu, they start to have their in-memory uh, cluster, in-memory computation cluster. And then now it's about 2015, 16. So people start to leverage the DRAM technology for, uh, for the rest of the world. And what we have seen is a technology like, uh, like Spark, which is an in-memory computation framework, has taken off. So many companies, many companies has leveraged Spark to improve their big data analytics. And uh, the, there are so many in-memory computation frameworks, but what we're still missing is a solution for the storage layer. And in order to make the storage to, take, to be more effective in this memory setting, we need more capacity. And this we foresee in the following several years, be the, the in-memory or memory-centric storage will take off, like the way Apache Spark took off. So that's about the hardware trend. On the other side, we, took a lot, we take a look at the big data ecosystem today. So if you take a high level view, it's basically just two layers. One layer is about the computation, computation framework, -like framework layer. And as this layer, you will see that many frameworks, like a very popular framework like Spark, MapReduce, and there are many other frameworks like Flink, Presto, and many more are coming. And there are many more frameworks being created to provide a very high, high performance for certain workload. That's about the computation layer. On the other side, it's about the storage layer. At the storage layer, there are many storage options as well, thanks to the innovation of the industry. So for example, you will see many cloud storage. For, uh, you have Google, you have, uh, you have uh, Amazon, you have, uh, you have Microsoft Azure cloud storage, public cloud. On the other side, you also have private cloud storage as well. For example, you may have OpenStack Swift uh, and many other options, and you also have open source storage like HDFS, like Gloucester File System, Ceph. And on the other side, you have a new storage like, uh, like Offrush Array. This is from the new companies uh, like Pure Storage or many traditional storage vendors uh, like EMC. So with this, with this ecosystem, the people try to uh, bridge them together. And the way they do this is like this. Basically, they need to build connectors between different computation frameworks and different type of compute, a uh, different type of uh, storage systems, to let them talk with each other, and you can see clearly from this figure the issue here is that 
this it looks very messy. And in the, in, the, in the real world, it is very messy. You have to do a lot of work to connect them, build a connector. And for, on the other side, a lot of the storage, they were not built for this type of workloads. Therefore, the performance is not, is, uh, is not great. So Aluxio, we come into the picture, is we put ourselves in the middle. And the, the thing we want to achieve is that we abstract different type of storage and to provide a unified namespace using a Faust API and expose this to the upper layer computation frameworks. And, uh, and these different type of frameworks, they can talk through us to access data from different uh, storage systems. And, for, and inside of Aluxio, we'll provide a tier storage feature, which is a very important feature in Aluxio. And thanks for the contribution from Intel. And to leverage, the uh, storage hierarchy in the, from the, in the, in the compute cluster, and uh, which we'll also talk about these features in the, in the later slides in Gene's talk. So, so then with this feature, people ask, what is Aluxio? So it's a memory speed virtual distributed storage. And we virtualize the data and provide the memory speed for different applications to share the data. And we enable this virtualized data access across multiple types of storage at the same time. And then we are an open source uh, system, open source um, a project. And, uh, and we have a very strong community, open source community, with a, with a pretty strong growth. And you can see, uh, since the last, when we had the last meetup, it was, uh, we released a 0 0.8. And uh, back then, we had around uh, 100, 180, uh, maybe 180 contributors. And then along the way now, we had our 1.0 release and the 1.1 release. Uh, and the contributor is, uh, is around 300 people nowadays. And, uh, and it's, it's actually the fastest growing open source uh, project in the big data ecosystem. And uh, it's around 300 contributors from over 100 uh, organizations. And you will see this, this figure shows the number of uh, contributors uh, growth uh, since the starting of different projects compared with other uh, very popular projects as well. And we, we, we feel really appreciate there are so many great companies uh, take participate in this, in this community uh, like, like the ones uh, at the bottom. And then uh, around two, three weeks ago, uh, along with the fast growth of the community, we feel it's the right time to form the governance model uh, for the community to further uh, accelerate the growth of the, of the whole uh, project, as well as the community. And, and uh, as the initial members of this, uh, PMC members of this project, so they are from the following companies, like uh, Alibaba, Baidu, Google, and uh, IBM, Intel, um, uh, Intel, IBM, Intel, Huawei, and many others. And uh, in the following, Intel took a very uh, strong initiative and a lot of contribution in this. And in the Gene slides, it'll talk about some detailed features coming from Intel and the community. And then in these slides, I just want to take a little bit more time to walk through the benefits Aluxio brings into the ecosystem. The first thing is about the flexibility. So it, we, because of the architecture, the stack arch figure we have shown, uh, Aluxio we enable new workloads across different type of storage systems and through our Faustus API and many other APIs. So we have the unified namespace which enable these applications to access data in any storage system. And this architecture is actually also future proven, which means that if you have a new application, as long as you plug in into use Aluxio interface, you will be able to interact with the data from any storage. And on the other side, similarly, if you have a new storage system, as long as you plug it into the Aluxio ecosystem, you, you will suddenly enable so many workloads which are uh, enabled by, by Aluxio. That's about the flexibility. And next thing is about agility. So as, I, as the, the two, two items I explained above, so because of the, this architecture, as a user or customer, you can work with any framework of your choice, and you can also choose any storage uh, of your options as well. 
And in the meantime, we provide, uh, allows you provide very high performance data access uh, in, this, in this architecture. And uh, we don't have, the, we didn't talk about some, um, we don't have the detailed slides to talk about use case today. But for example, there are some public use cases, like the one from Baidu. They use, uh, they use Aluxy in production for more than 200 nodes. And uh, it, Aluxy brings them around 30 times performance improvement for their, uh, for their workload. And Barclay, uh, leading bank, a uh, leading financial institution, they also use Aluxio, uh, which they wrote the, uh, they wrote the article uh, about the detail how they use Aluxio to move the data from Terra data into Aluxio and query it very fast. And they say, they're, based on their measurement, uh, Aluxio improved performance from hours to seconds for, for Barclay's use case. And there's another one, um, it was very, for Barclay one, that's a, that's a SQL use case. There's actually, uh, there are many more workloads can run a lot on top of Alexio as well. And, and actually two weeks ago, and there is a China's Expedia company called Chunar. So they published a, a, a use case. They are running Alexio in their production for around nine months. And uh, Alexio serve to serve a real time streaming and machine learning workloads. And uh, an interesting thing is on top of Alexio, they run multiple different frameworks. In their particular case, they run both Spark Streaming as well as Flink to do real-time machine learning to serve very critical workload, which is their online ad serving. And on the other side, they use Aluxio to manage both HDFS as well as Ceph underneath. And uh, on average, they saw a 16 times performance improvement. And during the peak time, when there's a lot of traffic, when the network is congested, what they see using Aluxio can bring them 300 times performance improvement. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, another, another uh, great use case uh, to show the performance benefit. And the other thing is, is, very, is very useful to the, our users as well is about the cost. So with Aluxio, so what you can achieve is that instead of co-locating the storage and compute together, which you have to scale concurrently or at the same time, and waste one of the two resources. So with Aluxio, we enable, you can actually uh, grow the storage and the compute independently and to save the cost in your, in your environment. And in the high level, Aluxio will enable any applications to, uh, to access any data from any, any storage systems at the memory speed. Okay. So I think that's all from my, my slides. And uh, Gene will talk about the new features and improvements we had in the Aluxio 1.0 and 1.1 release. Thank you.